Weeds are important to manage because they compete with crops for nutrients and water. You must control weeds before they spread, or else they'll be a bigger problem later. There are basically two kinds of weeds. Annuals are weeds that grow and die back each year. They spread only by seeds, so you must remove weeds before the seeds mature and drop from the plant. Some common annuals are annual ryegrass, fillery, and lamb's quarters. Perennials are weeds that live on from year to year and may appear to die off in the fall like an annual does, but their roots remain alive. Perennial weeds can spread by seeds or by roots, and these are harder to control. Some common perennial weeds are field bindweed, also called morning glory, Bermuda grass, and nutsedge, which produces nuts underground. There are several kinds of weed prevention and control strategies. Preventing weeds takes consistent effort, but it takes less time and is cheaper in the long run than having to control a serious weed problem. Here are the most important steps you can take to reduce weed problems. Many growers plant the same crop year after year, so the same weeds will grow and go to seed every year. If you rotate your crop with another crop that grows or is finished at a different time, you can disc or spray herbicide at a time when your main crop, such as a strawberry, would still be bearing. Also, herbicides that are not permitted for use on one crop may be registered for use in other crops. In this way, you can break the life cycle of weeds. Planting a cereal cover crop, such as oats or barley, can help suppress weeds and improve your soil quality. In any case, always prevent weeds from spreading or going to seed, even when the land is not planted to a crop. A fallowed field like this will lead to a serious weed problem when the next crop is growing. Fumigation controls most weeds, but it is expensive and there are restrictions to where and how it can be used. Many growers currently use Vapam, which kills many weeds when properly applied. Vapam is very toxic, it requires a permit from the Agricultural Commissioner to use, and it must be used by a licensed applicator only. Solarization, like fumigation, kills weed seeds and diseases. However, solarization is not toxic and does not require a permit. Solarization is discussed in detail in the section on land preparation. Using mulch suppresses weeds in the berms or rows, but you still need to pull weeds through the hole, and of course you'll need to control weeds in the furrows. Herbicides, such as Roundup Weathermax, are effective for weeds growing in the furrows, but you need to make sure that your crop is listed on the herbicide label. Also, be sure to check the label for the pre-harvest interval, which is the time you must wait after spraying before you can harvest the crop. This is very important because if you harvest the crop too soon, the crop still has chemical residue on it and can make you and your customers sick. So, for example, during strawberry harvest season, you cannot use an herbicide like Roundup because it has a 14-day pre-harvest interval and you need to pick your strawberries every few days. Be sure to avoid spraying on windy days, which could kill or damage your crop. There are also herbicides that can be sprayed in the furrows before the weeds start to grow. These are called pre-emergence herbicides, which require either mechanical incorporation or rainfall or irrigation shortly after spraying to work correctly. Examples of pre-emergence herbicides include Gol, Devernal, and Dacthal. You can also remove weeds by hoeing or by hand, which is commonly done by growers in the Central Valley. Consider using cultivation with an implement on a tractor for low growing crops. This may be your only option if herbicides cannot be used because of long pre-harvest intervals. If you use a tractor-driven implement, the rows and the plastic must be straight or the implement may rip or shred the plastic. Hãy subscribe cho